Hello, and welcome to Cleo's Archive. I'm Caroline, but today you're going to know me as Cleo, the muse of history. And I'm sorry for my assistant behind me. She's insisted on being in the room today while I film. Yes, hi. <laughs> Death is an inevitable part of life that comes for us all. Ghost stories tell of souls trapped in this world after they've died, witches with magical gifts and psychics that can foretell your future death. The Irish have a story of a creature that combines all of these gifts and it goes back centuries. So let's dive into one of my favorite folk tales, the Banshee. <laughs> yeah, you want to tell the story? You want to tell the story? Banshee comes from the old Irish word, binsheed, and I'm very sorry if I said that wrong. I did my best. It translates to fairy woman or woman of the fairy mound. Yes, I did have to read that. I'm dyslexic. Um, <laughs> it's important to look at the word banshee linguistically because of that word sheed in there, which is related to old Irish words tumuli which mean mounds of earth or stones that were sprinkled across the countryside. Tamale traditionally covered graves and were considered to be homes to spirits of the dead. The Banshee dates back to the 8th century when women would gather at a bedside and sing sad songs signifying the impending death of a loved one. There's a similar myth in Scotland which goes by several names and I apologize in advance for this. Um, the Bin... Bin Nye? the laundress or the little washerwoman. She's an otherworldly creature who is spotted when somebody is near death and is seen washing the clothes of one who is going to die. The Banshee has several accounts of her appearances. The two most notable are exact opposites. One is an old woman with long straggly gray hair, long sharp nails, and she's dressed in tattered rags. The other is a beautiful young woman with sometimes silvery or red hair. But there is the other one which I find very curious and mysterious, where she has no discernible features. She dresses in all black and wears a long dark veil covering her face. And that one would creep me out the most, honestly. I hate not being able to see people's faces. I, I really don't like that. These women appear to warn of the death of a family member, and their keening wails are piercing and shrill. While they are connected to death and warn of its approach, they're not the harbingers. They're simply the messengers. They're like Hermes. In fact, it's actually believed that banshees were once mortal women themselves. They became banshees in death after being brutally murdered, and now they give others the chance to prepare for the deaths they didn't have the chance to. Some tales say that each family has their own banshee, and they develop a special bond with them. That the family can actually recognize their banshee by her song, or that only the person fated to die can hear her song. From what I can tell, it varies family to family, and even region to region in Ireland and Scotland, what the stories will say. I know it's a morbid story, but women who were murdered or died horrible deaths and are now trapped in the afterlife aren't secluded to Irish myth. The Rusalka hail from Russian mythology. They're cousins to mermaids or nixies and live kind of like water nymphs. Like the Banshees, they were once mortal women who died brutally. However, their death was specifically tied to water, which is what turned them into a Rusalka. There's also the story of Medusa, who wasn't murdered, but was assaulted by Poseidon in Athena's temple. Now, depending on your take on the story, Athena was either protecting or punishing Medusa. Either way, it's a story of a woman who had her sense of safety stripped away in murder or an assault, and then was transformed into something else. So many of these stories served as lessons and metaphors at the time. 
I'm sure there are many to look at, but personally, as a woman who's been at the brink of death more than once, who has been terrified and frankly, in incompetent hands, <laughs> I find a sense of solace in these stories. While I don't think Athena was protecting Medusa, if we look at the Banshees, they're not women who would have died kindly or quickly. They took their pain and turned it into something comforting and beautiful. Their appearance might be a bit unsettling at times, but their aim is to give people a chance to say goodbye. A chance to be at peace with their end before it comes. Like many cultures, many Irish folk tales are passed orally through generations. You can find accounts of families who have passed their tales down through generations, and the Banshee is no different. Whatever you believe, it's undeniable that these stories bring people comfort, and I think that itself is beautiful and haunting. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and if you would like to be notified when I put up a new video, hit the bell icon, it apparently does something. And don't forget to let me know in the comments what myth, legend, or folklore you would like me to cover next time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Bye!